Hello everyone and welcome to a special edition of Frightmare HQ, the video nasties era. I am Ooh. joined today by Charles Doze. Hello, Charles. What's up, Lloyd? You're looking beautiful. Oh, thanks, baby. And then in your lower left corner is Mike Hewitt from Arrow Video. Thank you for joining us today, Mike. Hey, Lloyd. Ooh. Hey, Charles. Glad to be here. Well, we're glad to have you because, um, you know, I, I don't know a whole lot about the Video Nasties era. I do know... I do know of it. I do know of a few things about it, but uh, we're, we were hoping to bring someone on that lived through it maybe and had, had some recollection, and uh, we think that you're the man. Yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Where do I start? Lloyd, Where do I even start? Lloyd only knows about like nasty videos. Lloyd likes dirty videos, and I had to tell him <laughs> it's not the same thing. He thought we were doing a dirty video show. Lloyd was like, "Yes, Charles, I'm so excited to talk about all the dirty videos I know." And I'm like, "No, Lloyd." I got no. so excited. I thought we were going to talk about dirty videos. No, I, I actually I do know a bit about it, um, but not enough, and not enough. So this is going to be a learning experience for me as well. Um, so what can you tell us, what, uh, what was the Video Nasty era exactly? What was that? So it's sort of, so the Video Nasty era was uh, 1984 um, and essentially uh, an act in UK Parliament was, was passed that uh, violence in, in video was, was seen as obscene uh, and it hadn't been seen up until that point. So in 1984, there became this list um, of what is known as the official DPP list. And it was about 72 films that were effectively banned or deemed obscene, um, of which 30, I think it's about 33 of them were, were successfully prosecuted and then another 39 were on the list. Um, but in essence, it became uh, a huge uh, a movement really for the UK horror scene, it effectively made a list of absolute must-see movies for anybody that was really yeah. into horror films uh, and just really just invigorated the, the horror community. Uh, I mean, to put it into context, I, uh, 1984, I was 12 years old, so I wasn't really up on what was going on at the time. But uh, I guess, you know, we all had our different ways into horror, you know, especially, you know, you guys and, and everybody who's watching. We all had our different ways into horror. Um, and I was very much into books. You know, the whole James Herbert wave had come out. But, but, and this is where the term nasties had come from. It had come from the books that had been published in the sort of 70s um, that had all of these really descriptive, violent, gory passages. Um, and it effectively, yeah, it rolled on to, to videos in a way uh, that... I guess in the late 70s was the first time that people could actually access films via VHS. You know, VHS had just sort of come out. It had just become this big thing. Uh, and it's probably, you know, the same for you guys. But, you know, in the UK, it was very hard to get see, to get to see some of these 70s and 80s, early 80s horror films from Europe or from other parts of the world because you know you, you didn't have the internet there you couldn't just search for the internet you couldn't even go to a, a vhs store uh, and just rent it the only way you could get to see films was by through cinema clubs or if they appeared on tv so i guess yeah in the in the, in the late 70s early 80s there was this huge glut of releasing um specifically horror films i think you know because studios were really reluctant to embrace the vhs era at that time they didn't want to release their their films they were afraid of piracy so to fill this market everybody just started buying any film they could get their hands on uh and yeah i guess it started off with this huge moral panic um that suddenly all of these horror films were being made available uh in your home and not only in your home, but that children could see them all. And of course, you know, as kids, everybody would watch it, rewind it, watch the gory bit again. And there was this huge moral panic that came out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when, I, they, when they like, uh, do you know, like when they prosecuted films, what was the result of prosecution? Was it just the films had to be edited or were they just completely banned? Was the, that's always something that always inter interested me. 
Yeah, so they kind of bypassed in the UK because they they weren't they didn't need to be uh, cert certified. Uh, so in the UK we have the BBFC, the British Board of Film Classification. You guys have the MPAA, you know, which give your your classifications. So when VHS first came out, uh, they 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 could get around the classification, so anything could be released. So in the early 80s, you would have, you know, uh, the uncut versions of Cannibal Holocaust, you'd have the uncut versions of Cannibal Ferox, they would all be in the stores. Uh, and it eventually sort of transpired um, that, that they all did need to be classified. Uh, so there was like a two phase process. So for instance, take Cannibal, Cannibal Ferox, for instance, that, that was released uh, initially. And in 1982, the distributor of Cannibal Ferox withdrew it. Uh, and submitted it for classification. I can't remember how many minutes they had cut out, but they had, you know, 20 odd minutes cut out. Uh, and then they re-released it back in its edited form, as it were, or its censored form. So that was voluntary up until 1984. And the problem with it being voluntary is that, you know, some people did it, some people didn't. They need to have two different versions of the film out. You'd have the old version that was uncensored or the new version that was heavily cut. Um, yeah, and that's how it was. I guess, to your question, Charles, um, the 72 films that were eventually on the list, they were effectively banned. Um, they weren't allowed uh, anywhere. So that included a whole range of titles, um, including The Evil Dead. Uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre wasn't actually on the final list, although it was seen as like a, yeah, it was a poster child for the video nasty, video nasty era but it was never actually on the list or ever cut, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, I know there was uh, quite a few ones that were prosecuted. I know I Spit on Your Grave was as well. Yeah. Um, like you said, I mean, I think it maybe came to a point where the directors were, were happy their films were <laughs> banned and prosecuted because they made everybody want to see their movies. They're like, oh, I really want to see this now. They're like, yeah, you do. I'm sure they probably did. They probably didn't realize that everybody was then pirating them because uh, that was the only way yeah. that you could get to see them, of course. But uh, yeah, it definitely made poster childs of all of these films. And some of them are fantastic, you know, obviously, and some of them are not so. Uh, so, I mean, I, I was 12 at the time. I, I distinctly remember going into a video store when I was about 11. Uh, and picking up all of these VHS sleeves, turning them over, looking on, looking at the back. And I really remember seeing, uh, I think it was Zombie Creeping Flesh, it turned out to be, with this body on the slab with all of its limbs sort of sliced off. And it had such a, an impact on me as an 11-year-old. And of course, I was into my books then. I didn't have any disposable money, so I couldn't really get into the scene. So it wasn't until much later, in like the uh, late 80s, early 90s, that I started getting into collecting all of them or at least ticking them all off the checklist if you know what i mean now yeah, definitely weren't there some people who defied uh this ruling and went ahead and released some of their titles and were jailed subsequently for it or there weren't many there weren't many a lot of people got fined there were a lot of fines that went on i believe there was only one distributor that got um excuse me, got, that got arrested and sent to prison for it. And that was, and I can't remember his name, but it was the distributor who released Nightmares and a Damaged Brain. Okay, that was so, the title that I was thinking of. Yeah, so the distributor who released that film uh, effectively went to jail. And I, I believe he's the last person in this country to have gone to jail for effectively censorship. Yeah. That's um, so crazy. It, it <laughs> really is. It I mean, we we had a lot of censorship going on. It was mainly due to the MPAA and then people that wanted to get an R rating on their film so that it could get a good uh, theatrical release in the 80s. But, you know, eventually, I mean, there were a lot of things that um, we never saw some of the cut footage on. But um, just the idea of knowing that, you know, somebody went to jail for it and then there was all kinds of legal ramifications is just mind blowing to us. Mm. It became it became a big moral panic, Lloyd. You know, and and you know how these moral panics go, and this, they're, they're endemic within culture. You know, they've always happened. In the fifties, there was the whole horror comics moral panic. You know, there was there was obviously the books in in the seventies. 
videos because it was a new form. We've since had, you know, games have been a victim of moral panics. Yeah. Um, and it effectively all, all came about because it was, it was a moral panic. And it was a, a group of people who thought, how can this happen? We can't let this happen. We need to take this to the government, and the government needs to react. Um, and I guess in the 80s, you know, when we had Margaret Thatcher in, in power and uh, we'd just come off the back of a, a, a Falklands war and there was unemployment in the country and it became a, an easy victim almost for the government to say, yeah, we can step in here. We can stop these being shown in homes uh, and we've got to win, you know, and, and that's effectively where it all came from. Yeah. I, I remember reading a, a, a headline <laughs> they had in the newspaper where they were talking about the, the video nasties would also affect the moral well-being of your animals, like your dogs and cats. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> <It> was, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think it was Graham, Graham Bright, who was the MP. And yeah, I was, I was watching a documentary on it this afternoon, to be honest, just to catch up. And he said, yeah, the, these films have an effect on children and dogs. Uh, and he said that on a live television interview. Um, your poor dogs, everybody. <laughs> they can't watch <laughs> Evil Dead. What are we going to do? <laughs> but everything looking, got caught Everything got caught up in it. Uh, in, before the Video Act in 1984, effectively police had the ability to go and seize films from any local stores. And police were going in and seizing copies of Apocalypse Now. They were seizing copies of The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas because of its mm. title. You know, they were just seizing them. Starring Dolly Parton, of course that's not a video nasty. <laughs> Maybe it is. Maybe it's a secret video nasty we don't know about. Maybe. I mean, yeah, this, this is the view we had of Texas, by the way, when I was a child growing up. There was both chainsaw massacres and really good whorehouses. <laughs> Everybody's means. like, we got to go to Texas. There's all kinds of stuff <laughs> going on there. Everybody's got to go. Well, that's better than the previous uh, uh, stereotypes that people had of us of uh you know, cowboy hats. Well, here you go. I got a cowboy hat on. But I was like, Lloyd, don't. <laughs> cowboy hats, and we're all riding horses, and there's tumbleweeds blowing around town. And we, we did have Dallas, of course. Yeah, so we did know J.R. Ewing, and uh, yeah, that whole that whole thing. But yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, that's so. Good. Well, that's nightmares, so good. nightmares, and a damaged brain, and we it's called Nightmare in the U.S. But that's mm -hmm. that's one of my all time favorite flicks. I love that movie. <clears throat> I don't think it's ever gotten enough praise for just how wacky and crazy that it is. It's but great, yeah, I see that it says that it's that it remains banned, but I thought it got a an uncut release not too long ago over there. Uh, I'm not sure actually. I don't know. Uh, I don't know offhand. I do know we're still having censorship problems on some of these mm -hmm. films so as recently as april this year the film love camp seven was denied classification for streaming so there, there are one or two that still haven't got through uh, official classification um nightmare nightmares on a damaged brain i believe it went through uncut but i might be wrong yeah there's a few i think that are still not released i think um joe d'amato's absurd i think is still not available there either which is interesting uh, that one's not uh the beast in heat is another one although severin did a great release of that um and there are one or two that you think okay yeah that then they probably don't deserve the release i mean there are a couple that i still haven't seen like fight for your life or uh a couple of titles like that the, the more lesser known ones that really probably only got their fame through this list yeah it's crazy though. I mean, you, I think even like um, like Blood Feast is still like Hershey Gordon loses Blood Feast. I think it's still not available either. I think I was reading that, which that's an interesting movie from the '60s. If it's still banned, no, Blood Feast is fine. That's uncut. Uh, that oh, was, perfect. I was part. We did that one through our HD Lewis box set. I was oh, going to yeah, say yeah. I thought you guys did. Yeah. And what do what are your personal feelings? I mean, are there any films that go too far for you? <laughs> For Not me, Mike. for you personally, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, re I mean, recently I championed the UK release of a Serbian film, which I guess is probably at the cap of where my tolerance is. Uh, and I hugely champion that film, and I, I, I will do. Uh, I still think it's an incredible film, and we went through a lot of. <sighs> Try not, I wouldn't say trouble uh, with the BBFC. We went through a lot of work with the BBFC to, to try and get that one through the UK uncut. And in the end, we had five minutes of cuts. But 
Um, I was I was reading what the BBFC said about Love Camp Seven and and why they still refuse that, and and basically their point of view is that it was uh, it was showing rape in 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 ways that were designed to titillate an audience. And do you know what? You know, I think you know that's that's one instance where I'm. I wouldn't say I was censorial, but I wouldn't back a film that had been released that had that sort of context, I guess. Right. Well, with gotcha. Serbian film, is that's one movie that if you don't know what uh, the intentions of the filmmaker were, you can totally, you know, not support it, you know. But you, you really have to know what his intentions were to reflect, you know, the culture that's going on in Serbia and... Uh, I I think when I first saw it, I didn't really understand it either, and it quite repulsed me as well. But after you hear about what the film represents, then you you kind of give it a pass. Do you feel the same way, or? Yeah, I think so. Um, I worked with the director Sergam and producer Nikolai, and they were they were very upfront about what they designed it to be. You know, it was a it was a critique of the Serbian government. It was a way that you know a film that effectively said that everybody's fucked from birth in this country because the government is going to screw you, whatever. Uh, and, you know, I, I believe that. And a lot of people who've seen it and, underst- and hear that don't believe it. And they just think it is. Uh, it was a rich filmmaker, just, uh, I say rich, you know, in, in the scheme of things in Serbia. Uh, he's come from a, a, well, uh, a well-off background that he was just out there to outrage people. But I, th- I, I don't think that. I think he, he's trying to make a point. Yeah, the more I read about it, the more I felt that that was the case because uh, yeah, and then you know, and you go back and I've only watched the movie once. I don't know if I would ever watch it again just because it's so intense. <laughs> it's it's a hard watch, you know, it really is. But it's something you have to see at least once. Well, the thing that got to me the most is the ending. The ending is devastating, and um, mm. I don't know that I could do that again. It's just emotionally, it's too much for me. Yeah. Yeah. Let's uh, let's look at some other ones that were on this prosecutor list. One of Lloyd's favorites, Evil Speak, Lloyd. I love <laughs> Evil Lloyd's Speak. Back. I can't. I do. I love Evil Speak. I can't believe anybody would ever ban that movie. I know. Clint Howard's so lovable. <laughs> Is it Clint Howard? Isn't it Clint Howard in that film? Yeah. 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 <sighs> so good, isn't it? Yeah, it's really good. I, why would it be banned? I don't. No idea. It, it says they had to drop three minutes and 40 seconds before it could be released on video. So I'm interested yeah. in what was dropped because I can't think of the top of my head what would really be needed. <laughs> Who knows, this right? Is, this, is, this is the weird thing about the, the Video Nasties list. It was sort of so inconsistent. You know, I mean, I can understand Cannibal Holocaust being on that list. You know, Evil yeah. Speak, less so. Um... <laughs> yeah, it's just, a, you know, it's just a and, key film, you know. It's, a, it's just fun. Mm. And the fact that it's not only on the list, it's on the prosecuted list too. It's like, okay, thank you guys. Yeah, that one actually got through, yeah, and got and got prosecuted. I mean, some of these you get like faces of deaths on here. Okay, we can get faces of death, right? I mean, there's not really. What, what can you yeah. edit out of faces of death? Like, it'd be like three minutes long. You're like, all right, guys, we got, we got it through. <laughs> it's three minutes yeah. twenty six seconds. Uh, Island of Death is one that I can totally understand. That movie is crazy off the wall yeah mm-hmm. house by the again, cemetery interesting yeah. one it's a great and again, film we've i think we've released i think i worked it out as about we've done about 12 or 13 of these now uh which you know uh house by the cemetery and uh islands of death both both on our our label and i never mm-hmm. thought growing up when i got into the video nasties that i'd be working at a company that released some of them for sure that's got to be yeah. fun right you know you're in a position where you can actually give these to people finally you know you can mm. bring these in a nice release to people so that's got to be fun right yeah absolutely yeah when you can release a, a great version of zombie flesh eaters or tenebrae or you know some of those others on that list it's uh, yeah it's obviously a, a nice place to be so Are there, there were... any on the list that you would really want to do that haven't been available or an option yet uh on the original 39, I guess, um, I mean, Cannibal Apocalypse, I know it's had some releases elsewhere. I, I really like that film. And 
that came back into my mind recently when John Saxon uh, passed and the news of John Saxon passing away came came to be known. Uh, what is that? I mean, Driller Killer, we've already done. I'm just trying to think mm. offhand. Last House on the Left, we've done. Night of the Bloody Apes is a fantastic little low budget film, which is a lot of fun. Uh, That'd be a great watching. one to do. Yeah, that would be really good, wouldn't it? Night of the Bloody Apes. Yeah, and it's a Mexican horror film, which uh, mm-hmm. they don't get a lot of love, or I don't know. I, lo- I love a lot of the uh, 80s, especially the 80s. Uh, Mexican horror films are they just hard to get a hold of or why don't we see more Mexican horror films it's a good point isn't it I don't know yeah there's 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 some out there I'd love to see great releases though from the 80s like you said like uh, Santa Sangre would be one um, there's so many out there that you know the only way you can get them is real crappy DVD copies that's pretty much it yeah yeah, yeah. so you've got a couple of tapes on display behind you there yeah, I thought I'd bring them out. Yeah, I see a few. What do you got? Look at that. So these were bought when I was uh, so. That's my original spit on the grave. Let me just get my headphones back in. Nice. And uh, I've got an original Cannibal Holocaust as well. So those are the original uncuts. So I kind of got into this really in a big way in about ninety one, ninety two. And uh, I just got to university. I just got a part-time job, a bit of disposable income. And I went and moved from my hometown, a little sort of seaside resort town called Torquay. Uh, and was up in a big city called Leeds, uh, in Leeds, uh, in the UK. And I discovered um, car boot sales. Do you guys have car boot sales? Do you know what that is? I guess well, they, you guys don't have sell, car boots, do you? You have trunks. We have trunks. sell movies out of trunks, right? <laughs> yeah. That's what yeah. they do, yeah. So they, was it like a flea market, basically? We call them flea markets over here, I think. Yeah, probably, yeah. It'd be a car. It would be, essentially, you'd have a field somewhere, and everybody would drive up with their cars and basically open their trunks and sell stuff out the back, you know, whatever they had in their house. Right. And it became this big, you know, I, I that was where I discovered the, the, the film, the, the sort of the underground scene of pirated tapes and I would you know meet all these guys that had all of these copies of all of these tapes and they'd have their big lists and they would send you a list and you know then you then you'd tick off what you wanted send that list back to them they could then send the videos back to you and and I discovered this whole scene of, of you know everybody releasing these things selling old tapes selling copied tapes so that was where it became a really big thing for me and i really got suckered into to watching everything i possibly could so is that cannibal holocaust and last how um last house on the left are, are both of those spit on your uh, grave considered i spit on your grave right are they super yeah. uh rare tapes uh would they have been worth a lot of money at some point or yeah, they probably would. I don't think they're worth, you know, I mean, they're not in great condition, but um, there's definitely a collector market in the UK to collect all the 39 mm-hmm. original prosecuted ones. And then obviously the subset of the other 33 that were on the, that list. And then there was another section three list, which had about 80 more. So there were about 150 films in total that were caught up in, in the whole sort of scene. Even today, yeah. I mean, VHS is such a collectible market even today because, I mean, there's VHS tapes even in America that are worth a lot of money. And it surprises me, you know, the way it just keeps growing and growing because yeah. it seems like something that would have just died down because it's not really there for like Laserdisc. <laughs> it's there for like VHS, <laughs> you know, people want the VHS tapes. It seems well, to I got in- a comeback. It, it does. seems to be making a bit of a comeback as well. Yeah, with attainment, yeah. With, with attainment in the U.S., we've we've... We did a we did a VHS release of Lucky McKee is the woman, uh, and we're mm-hmm. looking at doing a couple more uh, upcoming as well. But you're right; it, it's a format that's being embraced by the new generations in their sort of the way that vinyl was. Whether it'll capture the vinyl thing, I doubt it. But yeah, it's just something about those movies. Just um, you know, there, there's certain like I always tell Lloyd this too, but there's certain horror movies that I don't think need super high quality versions. They look better when you have the crackly tape running you know it's when you start getting like a 4k of something that's really has really horrible special effects you're like oh i could see everything wrong with that you're like i don't want to you're like, no, i think that's what added to the whole scene of the video nasties because the only way that you get to to see a cannibal holocaust was a was seventh or eighth generation copy 
And when you're getting that really scuzzy feel, you're getting that real scuzzy horror feel that this is actually real. And yeah, yeah it made it even even be- better, I think. That was uh, the first time I saw Cannibal Holocaust was on like a set, set like you said, a seventh or eighth generation bootleg. And uh, But, you know, I still love seeing movies come out all cleaned up and beautiful the way the filmmaker intended. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I enjoy it. I, I still do uh, love seeing new movies, or, or not new movies, but new prints of movies that I'm used to, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And like you were talking about, Mike, you know, the, the, the boot sales. I mean, people don't realize the struggle back in the day of not having eBay and Amazon to be like, I really want this copy of a movie. Let me just type it in. I'll get it in three days. Sometimes you'd have to hunt for these things for like a month, two months, and you still wouldn't find them, you know? And people don't understand come- that struggle. <laughs> It's a shame. I do feel sorry for for people now getting into into horror films because, as you say, it's it's all so easy and accessible. And and half the fun was in this hunt of trying to find these tapes, of of speaking to people who had seen this specific film, but they didn't know where they could get it from or who they borrowed it off. And uh, yeah, it's it's almost a shame. You know, even films that you know, Love Camp Seven has been banned in the last three months in the UK, you can't release it. Of course, you can go straight online and find it. Um, Mm -hmm. It's not banned at all. It's just you're not allowed to release it and make money from it. Yeah. So you guys are still getting movies released that are still getting banned, like newer ones and stuff? Newer ones, less so. Um, I mean, I used to be really up on my censorship. I haven't been following it as much lately. There have been a couple of films lately that haven't been allowed. Uh, I can't think of any that come to mind um but it's occasionally inter- yeah, yeah it's interesting to think that even this day and age you know stuff still can sort of get a ban you know with how mm. much how much open release there is you know so much stuff you know online and through streaming sources and stuff and you can still hit that you know yeah 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 i'm not sure where i fully stand on censorship i'm against it in the most part but obviously you know there are a Serbian film, I would have probably wanted to have cut 10 seconds out myself. You know, there were yeah. 10 seconds in there where I, was, where I would have probably said, mm, that's probably too much. So we all <laughs> have our like, levels, you know, we all have our levels of, of understanding that. And Yeah. Well, I've, I've always, even if it's something that I don't like, I've always thought, you know, just release it uncut. It should be up to, you know, the people who watch them. And I've always thought... If children are watching these, why are they watching them? Where are their parents at? You know, they they should have parents that are that are watching this stuff. Now I know there's a lot of kids out there that don't have parents around to to I get, and I guess that's why censorship is is there. But um, I'm just all for you know just release it, release everything. Who cares? It, yeah, you know, it's all up to the individual. I was a, uh, I was the a bad influence when I was in like middle school because I would carry VHS tapes in my backpack and loan them out to kids because everybody <laughs> would know to come to Charles. I had copies of Dawn of the Dead and Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and I would be like, people would be like, Charles, I want to borrow it, and I charge them a dollar, <laughs> take the movie and watch it, and bring it back to me. So I was the bad influence. <laughs> Blockbuster Charles. Blockbuster Charles. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's wrong with us, Lloyd. It all starts at a young age, right? Yeah. Well, I had friends that would come over and. Their parents wouldn't let them watch certain movies, but they would see them at my house when I was a kid. <laughs> my mom, my mom let me watch, you know, whatever I wanted to watch, and I think I grew up okay. I think I did all right. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> it's clearly had an influence uh, on all of us, though, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, what's I, your? I, go on. What's Sorry, your? Good. What's the most re- recent Arrow release that came off of the list, uh, whether it be in the UK or? Uh, America. Uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, I can't recall. Yeah, that's what, a tough recent? one, I'm sure. Yeah, no, I can't recall. Have we had to cut things recently? We have had to still cut things. Mm-hmm. So uh, mainly animal, uh, accidental animal, you know, uh, suffering still has to come out. So there have mm-hmm. been a couple of westerns where it's impossible now to prove whether those animals were injured or not during filming. So if you can't prove it, it has to be trimmed out in this country, which I kind of understand. Um, And then there was also a Seijin Suzuki film, which um, in the background of one of the scenes had a poster of what looks like uh, an underage girl reclining 
Uh, and the BBFC said, no, you can't have that as the background. So we digitally, um, digitally zoomed in on it so that you couldn't actually see what that image was. Yeah. Um, so you, guys, you, you guys have done some fun ones. I mean, you guys, your release of Driller Killer a few years ago was really great. I did enjoy yeah. Driller Killer. I remember it came out in a steel book that was real nice. I have that one here. So yeah. <laughs> I love to see those. That was That's definitely a... a poster child of the video nasty. nasty oh, was it really? that, that essentially encapsulated everything that everybody had such outrage because <laughs> it was effectively a drill going straight into someone's brain as the poster. Yeah. <laughs> well, why you see the. It's got a great poster, like you said. You could just see, and the guy's like, ah, it's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I think it, it was the poster designs and all of these claims on all of these sleeves that, that caused the moral panic more than the content of the films themselves. You know, when you look back at some of these covers and the Driller Killer and, and Cannibal Holocaust eating all those guts and you've got all these strap lines like it's only a movie, it's only a movie. And I'm mm -hmm. sure all of this worked its way up into the moral panic more than the actual content of the films themselves. Um, Wasn't, have, um, I'll go ahead. Yeah, no, I'm just thinking what we have done recently. Uh, I guess, you know, the Dario Argento films, uh, Zombie yes. Fleshy, it was an old one of ours. I've, I've only got the list of the 39 in front of me. I can't recall the others offhand, but yeah. Wasn't the um, one of the main things that uh, would get you in big trouble, wasn't it if there was sex and violence in the same scene? Isn't that what really, you know pushed it or you know yeah so yeah. beyond 1984 what we had uh, the the guy who ran the bbfc was a guy called james Furman, and that was his particular thing he didn't want to see sexualized violence he had, he had particular you know um he was almost overly overly cautious about sexual violence so by the time i got into understanding what this scene was which is around the 90s you know we were still going through Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer was effectively banned. Reservoir Dogs wasn't given a home certificate uh, when it first came out. Uh, there were other films around that, that that period that were still getting caught up in it. But you're right, his, his main thing was the sexualized violence. So for instance, on a film like House on the Edge of the Park, the Italian film uh, with you know, Diodato with David, uh, I can't remember his name. Yes. What's his name? Hess, of course. Uh, where there's uh, specific uh, razor blade slices on, you know, breasts and stuff like that. I think, you know, that is still looked, looked down upon in this country. Mm. Yeah. And that was uh, the case with nightmares and a damaged brain also. That was a highly sexualized violence. So um, yeah. that probably did that movie in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Crash yeah, was I mean, another one. David uh, David Cronenberg's Crash caused a big furor oh. in the UK. Um, effectively, that became ind individual councils can choose whether they, a film can be screened in their area. So a lot of areas of London effectively banned Crash, and then lots of other areas around the country banned any theatrical screening of Crash um, because it's something that's alien to other people. You know, it's. Fetish, fetish, fetishization. I can't say that. Of car <laughs> crashes and <laughs> you know, is is something that's a bit off-putting to some people. Yeah, yeah. I agree. This is definitely a list that people you know should look more into because there's a lot of good stuff in there. I think um, a movie I like is on there. Uh, Extra. I think Extra was on the list too oh, at one point. Extra. Extra. I love Extra. <laughs> what a great movie. What a goofy, weird movie. Oh, good, isn't it? I was I was talking to, about it last night. I was at a friend's house. He's a special effects uh, wizard, Dan Martin, who's uh, he's done special effects for Possessor, Lords of Chaos, etc. And we were talking nice. about Extra and what a, what an incredible film it really is. And actually, another quick story: we've just done a, a horror lockdown short competition, uh, and where we've basically you know done this prize for for people to make their own films. We've had 150 entries, which is just a incredible. But there were two two entries specifically that use that extra to create their own little monster. You know, when you're on your back, you're on on all fours on your back, crawling along in a really weird environment, in a really weird way. Yeah, extra is a fantastic film. It is. Yeah, it's so that's it's so out there, extra. It's just there's so many scenes in there where you're just like, what is going on? What am I watching? <laughs> the toys coming to life. Ugh. 
It's just yeah. they just Soldier threw knocks everything the but <laughs> the, but the kitchen sink in in that movie, and I love it. Yeah, yeah. So your your contest is going well. 150 entries. What, what's the average run? Uh, they all had to be under five minutes. Uh, okay. We've had to disqualify about ten or so. So we're still working our way through them. We've we've narrowed it down to almost about twenty. Uh, oh, nice. and we'll get it down to the final ten in the next week, uh, and then we've got Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead from the Endless and Spring and Synchronic. Uh, they're going to be picking the winner from that. Oh, are we going to be able to watch? Are we going to be able to watch some of those? Are you guys going to have them like available for people to check out? Yeah, we're hoping to get the final ten to have an online vote. Uh, we just need to check in with all the filmmakers that they're comfortable with their films being made public because. Some of them might want to submit them to festivals. They don't want necessarily want them to be public yet. So as, as long as ev- as long as we can get everybody to to agree to have it up for a short while, we'll, we'll definitely be doing that. That'd be awesome. We'd have to do something, yeah. Lloyd, if they come up. Maybe we can watch them and you know watch them online with people and stuff. Since they're shorter ones, that'd be fun to do. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. The burning, um, actually, the burning is one of my favorites from the video. Oh, the this. burning. That's, that's one that we've released. At Arrow. I love the yeah. burning. I do too. It's an all-time favorite of mine. The the Savini yeah. effects make that effects make that movie in a lot of ways. Uh, he was at his A game, and I understand he turned down Friday yeah. Part Two to do this to do the burning. Yeah. Um. What else? This is so I think Madhouse was up. another one, right? Madhouse Mad was, was another, another one. one time. Madhouse. Yeah, you guys yeah. have done that one. That's a great film that. too. But uh, like, like you said, there are some on here that probably wouldn't have, nobody would know about if uh, if they were never on the list. There's some questionable quality ones, but yeah. overall, there's some really good ones, you know. Yeah. Well, like, course, great ones. I get yeah. I get some of the reason behind some of these, like Slave of the Cannibal God. I don't know if the reason was because of the uh, animal violence, but that mm-hmm. that that went too far. I mean, you I mean you could tell like some of the stuff in Cannibal Holocaust. Uh, they ate some of those animals and, you know, I get people are ob- objected to any kind of animal violence at all, but Slave of the Cannibal God went too far just pushing the monkey over to the yeah. snake. It was just like, okay, this is, this is yeah. out of bounds. So some of them, yeah, you're like, uh, that's a little too much. <laughs> yeah. Is that where your limits? I mean, I agree with you. That's where my limit is sort of, you know, animal suffering. Animal violence. Oh, animal okay. violence is always my limit. That's where if I'm watching anything and I'm like, oh, no, I'm like, let's let's flip this off. You can yeah. do whatever you want to a person, but you start messing with an animal. I'm like, no, stop it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, anything real, I think, is off limits. If you're intentionally hurting a person for real, like a snuff film or something, or you're hurting an animal. Yeah. Any, yeah. Anything like that, as long as it's it's fake, I'm fine with it, you know. And I said that earlier. Anything goes. Well, no, I do. I do have. Everybody does have limits, like you said, Mike. But yeah, anything yeah. real where you're intentionally hurting something or someone is that's just not. That's not cool. That's not cool. Not not, not not really hurting people. Yeah. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Can- um, Cannibal Holocaust is one of my favorite films of all time, and and I watch it quite often. And it's probably the only film where I can almost excuse the animal thing. As you say, they, they claim they, they use the, the animals as food on that. But equally, it, it adds to the horror, you know, in, in a way that the others don't. The others, the other films that use that sort of gimmick. Um, yeah, for me, I, not that I can excuse it, but I can almost understand it in kind of a Holocaust. Yeah. I'm the same way. It, Cannibal Holocaust is way up there on the list for me and um, you know, but I also have a little more tolerance to animal violence because I grew up on a farm. And mm-hmm. as long as the animals were being used for, you know, food or whatever, that doesn't bother me. Um, because, you know, I've hunted in my life. Uh, I've been around hunters all my life. I grew up on a farm. I've seen animals castrated and, you know, all kinds of horrible things. But, you know, as long as it, it's for a purpose, I, I'm not totally opposed to it. I think it's different for me. I grew up in the city. I grew up in a big city, Lloyd. So, yeah, <laughs> I was a yeah. big city boy. I was city folk. We don't know what's going on. <laughs> I mean, every year we slaughtered we slaughtered a, a cow, and uh, it ended up in our freezer, you know. And it was shared amongst the family, you know. And um, my grandparents uh, had some of it in their freezer. We had some in our freezer, and and we ate all of it. So that's the way it was. 
one interesting film on here that I think was crazy that it was um, also prosecuted was was the Funhouse. Toby Hooper's The Funhouse. I don't really <laughs> see a need for that one either. It's interesting, right? It's a great movie, but again, it was probably you know in a police raid, and it said on the cover from the director of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and that would have been enough, you know, um, for it to uh, put it put on the list. Makes you wonder how many of these they never even watched. They were just like, nope, that one too. That's bad. It's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. What was the one you mentioned earlier that you haven't seen personally? Was it Wake and Fright? No, it wasn't Wake and Fright, which I love. The the Australian film with, um, I can't remember his name, the guy from Halloween, uh, Donald, Donald Pleasance. Pleasance. Yeah, Pleasance. Uh, it's not Wake and Fright. It's a film called uh, The Fight for Your Life. Fight for um, your life. I oh, fight for your life. I don't know that I've ever heard of that film. It's no, a, yeah. Exploitation flick. I've seen that one. It's an interesting film. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of racism in the film, apparently. It, it's, yeah. Uh, um, or it, I'm not sure if the film itself is racist, but it deals with sort of race, racist elements. Uh, but it's one yeah. I've never got around to seeing. It, it's just never been released in this country. Okay. I'm yeah, looking at it uh, on IMDb. I have heard of this movie. I recognize the yeah. poster. I don't there's think some I've revenge, seen it There's some like rape revenge stuff in it. And um, it's it's actually a really way, well-made movie. It's 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 a good watch, but it, it, there is a little bit kind of stuff going on there that could, you know, throw some people off. But um, overall, when you watch it, I mean, the it's one of those that like... You know, the, there's not really a lot of sex and nudity in it. There's like, you know, they sort of imply that rape is happening, but you don't really see anything going on. And you know, it's kind of tame for nowadays a little bit. Even maybe some of the other ones in the video nasty list. Yeah. <clears throat> but there's a lot of racism terms in it. <laughs> lots and lots of racism usage yeah. in the script. So. Yeah. Well, I guess it depends on how it's used. You know, I mean, if it, if it's used in a negative connotation but you know if oh it's, it is okay. it is <laughs> it, if it's used if it's used you know to make a a point or whatever i get that i could totally get that i think yeah, it no, was it's coming not. from the right place but I, I haven't seen it so i can't comment on that oh we want you to comment mike go ahead comment on that yeah um yeah i mean there's just so many i mean like i said some of them you get but other ones are just kind of kind of off i mean of course stuff like last house on the left you kind of get that you know when it first happened you're like there's a lot of stuff going on in that you know cannibal holocaust like you said um <clears throat> uh, flesh for frankenstein i think was on the list too and i i like flesh for oh. frankenstein that's that's a fun movie yeah it's great <laughs> isn't it yeah yeah we got a chance to watch that in 3d take it um it's fantastic <sighs> i wish uh, i wish lloyd loves 3d lloyd yeah. wants everything in 3d I do. I love 3D. I'm a huge fan of 3D, and um, especially home 3D when you have the active shutter glasses. They work a lot better, and it looks amazing at home, uh, much better than at a theater. But well, when it, when is anybody going to convince Joe Delisandro to let go of these movies? I know. I want a good <laughs> release. I want a nice re-release of those. Yeah, maybe we should look into it. Maybe yeah, you should. should. But I've heard With he's like belt. totally against releasing it have you heard that or he d he doesn't want it out there again really okay that's what maybe. i've heard maybe <laughs> mike's like i can change his mind don't worry okay. mike's gonna call and be is like it, hey is it now just a waiting game until uh until <laughs> yeah no i don't know yeah <laughs> probably yeah that's true that's the we'll problem. release them when you're gone <laughs> that's what we're hoping Oops, with waiting. dawn of the dead right with rubenstein <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> There's a really good yeah, Dawn of the Dead coming out, though, isn't there? Or there is in uh, the UK. Uh, in the UK, there is. We don't yeah. get it. <laughs> okay, okay. I think 4K. he wants a billion to... dollars to release it in America. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we have to give yeah, him I fingers. Really we don't want to on any of this, to be honest. <laughs> I know you, I know you can't. But yeah. <laughs> He's like, I have no... <laughs> but we can. We can comment. We don't have any... We can comment. We're fine. Yeah. You can just smile and nod and go, uh-huh, guys, no comment. No comment yeah. from me. <laughs> We know you but told us like that those. Rubenstein was the greatest and that you love him, and then yeah, it's okay. Mike mm. loves Rubenstein. You know, we we kind of <laughs> talk to him, but we understand your love. Don't worry. Uh, but I do love those movies like Flesh of Frankenstein and Blood for Dracula. I would love to see beautiful releases of those. Please, yeah. 
I've never seen a good copy of Blood for Dracula, and I would love to see one. I've not seen a good copy of Blood for Dracula either, but yeah, you're right. There was a censorship feature uh, that uh, about 10 years ago in the UK, they did this censorship season at the BFI, the British Film Institute. So we got to see some of these being shown in, in a theatrical environment uh, for the first time, and it included a 3D version of Flesh for Frankenstein. Uh, and then obviously a few debates and stuff. And yeah, that, that was phenomenal to, to see that that film in its proper environment in a proper 3d theatrical screening yeah it's gotta be awesome yeah i would i'd love to see a nice you know flesh or frankenstein and blood for dracula if anybody's got a 35 millimeter print out there floating around and they want to just kind of show it i'm around let me know yeah yeah (laughs) didn't criterion put both of those out on dvd in the u.s a few years ago i I don't know they did but i don't i don't know i didn't i didn't like the release it just didn't feel like it was redone it just kind of felt like it was i don't know a nice pumped up like 480 version of it that's all it really felt like hmm i just remember that it was um it was one of those that got really expensive really fast because it went out of print and it was one of the early dvds that everybody was clamoring to pay lots of money for yeah yeah it's a lot now too if you look i think it's like it's over like 100, 150 bucks. It's a lot of money if you want to try to find one. So, uh, Mike, do you have a favorite video nasty one that you just, or I think two Cannibal, or three Can- at least? Cannibal Holocaust is way up there on my list as one of my yeah. favorite horrors of all time. I guess Texas Chainsaw, you can obviously include Evil Dead, is as an undeniable classic. Uh, I loved Island of Death. Um, we talked about that one earlier on, but I think that is just so offbeat and it just throws everything into the mix. You know, it's got every, every wrong ever. Um, <laughs> I remember the yeah. filmmaker of that one saying that that's what his point was. He just wanted to make a movie that with every kind of shock that he could possibly come up with and throw it yeah, all into yeah. one movie. And I, he was inspired by Chainsaw, wasn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We, we're still doing a lot of work with... Um, uh, Nico, um, so we've got a couple more films of his coming out soon as well. Nico Masterakis. Oh, nice. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're we're still got a great relationship with him. Uh, what else? What else? I mean, The Burning is one of my favourites. Uh, the Cannibal, all of the Cannibal films to an extent, you know, uh, were made a really big impact on me. Um, what else do I like? I'm going to scroll through this list. Faces While you're thinking, death. oh, Faces uh, of Death, this- yeah. Possession is, is one, one I like too. Possession's Possession is a great one. Such a good film, isn't it? Yeah. I will, I'm not rating Faces of Death, but I can distinctly remember seeing it for the first time and just getting completely drawn into this really gruesome uh, world, as it were. Uh, and I think The Killing of America is 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 obviously the legit version of that sort of mondo documentary. Whereas Faces I, yeah. of Death, as we all know, is just half of it's just faked. But, yeah. Yeah, I saw that for that the was... first time when I believe Severin put it out. If I'm not, if I'm thinking correctly, um, that was the first death. time. No, the um, the killing the of America. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that that one uh, had escaped me. I'd never even heard of it for years until they put it out. Yeah, yeah Faces of Death was Faces of Death was another one I used to keep in my backpack and run out to kids because that was really? another one people wanted to see. Yeah, how old are you, Charles? At this point, <laughs> um. I was 12. Six. Okay, yeah, 12. 12 is about the right age, isn't it? 11, 12, yeah. <laughs> I was young. But, I mean, I was I was the weird kid when I was 8. That like, 8 and 9, I knew who, like, George Romero was, and I could tell all his films. He'd be like, let me talk to you guys about Dawn of the Dead. People were like, what are you talking about? You should be watching Disney films. And I'd be like, no. We're talking about <laughs> Dawn of the Dead. <laughs> what is it that fascinated you? Because I, 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 I was thinking about this earlier today, and I remember... Mm-hmm being at primary school, which is up until, you know, 10 years old over here. And there was a guy, uh, uh, one of my friends bought in a horror book and started flicking through the pages and that just grabbed my interest. And I distinctly remember one of the, one of the girls in our class getting really horrified and running off screaming. And I thought, wow, this has no mate. And that I think began my love of, of horror films as it were. How, how did you guys get into to horror films? Obviously, Charles, if you were distributing at 12. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I, I always, I mean, I guess I got into them really young because I can remember being, you know, I was one of those kids that I could basically watch whatever I wanted. So I remember being like five and six and watching Nightmare on Elm Street, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street. And I remember the movies made me feel different than like kids movies. I remember feeling like scared and I actually liked being scared. And then it's kind of got to a thing where all I wanted to watch was movies that made me feel scared. By the time I was like eight, nine, I knew like directors and films and I, I really liked colorful, you know, colorful type atmosphere films. So that's what got me into like Dawn of the Dead, you know, with the crazy mm -hmm. blood and stuff. And it just sort of went from there. And I got to the point when I was like 10 and 11 and I knew like more about horror films than people who were like in their 20s and 30s. And it was just a strange thing. I, I found myself in, you know, middle school and stuff teaching kids about horror films and they would know about these films and you know they would never be able to watch them i'd be like oh if you like that one you should see this i have it in my backpack here so just take it and watch it and that was just i don't know just grew from there i never knew that about you charles that you were there's a, a lot wrong with me that you were a <laughs> smut <laughs> you were a smut peddler i was a smut peddler i'd be like let me tell you guys something you got a dollar i got something you can rent take it home <laughs> you gotta hide it <laughs> Did you start people off easy and just sort of introduce them to a poltergeist before you ran nope. them off? Or, yeah, nope. not straight in. <laughs> I throw them straight in. It would be like you're either it's sink or swim, guys. You're either going for it or you're gonna just never watch anything again. So, we're yeah. Doing it. <laughs> My mom was a she was a big movie fan. Period. But she she would take me to see everything. I I've told this story a bunch of times, but my mom took me to see The Exorcist when I was probably four years old. Wow. And uh, I, th I think that's what drew me in was I always wondered, how did they do that? That was always my question. How did they do that? How did they make her head spin around? So the effects really uh, did a lot for me. You know, that's mm -hmm. that was the draw for me. How did they do that? That looks so real, but it can't be real. How did they do it? And then I got into, my mom, like I said, would take me to see anything I wanted to see. And then anytime anything great was on TV, she would always go, oh, you have to watch this. Because that was back, we, we lived, like I said, we lived way out in the country. There was no cable out there. Uh, we hadn't gotten on the VHS bandwagon yet. And so anything, anytime something great come on, like uh, The Dark Night of the Scarecrow, I remember her saying, oh, you have to see this, come watch this. Uh, I remember doing that with Psycho as well. Oh, Psycho's great. You got to watch this. Come, come, sit down and watch this. And so um, we we had a drive-in in town. We went to the drive-in a lot, and I saw a lot of Hammer films at the drive-in. And that's awesome. Yeah, but th it was my mom. My mom influenced me. And then years later, I w I, w I would tell her, y "You're the reason why I watch all these movies, Mom." And she would go, "I did not. You you begged me to see that movie." <laughs> I, so. I guess, you know, kind of in my sense, like you could say that, you know, my my mother's, um, you know, desire to not really care what I watched <laughs> helped influence that because she'd be like, I don't care what you watch here. <laughs> Just put it on. It yeah. shuts you up here. You want to watch this? Go ahead. I'm like, I don't want to watch Five of Goes West. It wasn't my, it wasn't just horror movies, although, although my mom did have an affinity for a good horror movie. Um, but she would take me to see anything. I remember when, um, National Lampoon's Vacation first came out, she took me to see yeah. that. And I remember being at a friend's house and saying, Oh, have you seen Vacation yet? And the, his mother was like aghast. She couldn't believe my mother took me to see that movie. It was just filth, you know? So, really? Oh yeah, that I, movie was back in the day. It was it was kind of a dirty little movie, you know. It was a bit racy, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, it yeah, was. As in sexy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. mine, mine was kind of weird because it was a combo for me. I mean, I was eight and nine. I loved horror movies. It's kind of weird, but I loved horror, like really big horror movies, and I loved black exploitation films. It's, right. it's a strange mixture, but I, I was like eight and nine. I was in love with Pam Greer. Like Pam Greer changed my life. So <laughs> those <laughs> movies. If you ever wonder what's wrong with Charles, that was my, my growing up on George Romero and Pam Greer films. That's what happened to me. That was my okay. favorite stuff. And what about you, Mike? I, yeah. I mean, I, I've always had a fascination for horror. I don't know. It didn't come from my parents. It came from reading books. I, I do remember watching Jaws and my mom saying, it's only make-believe. It's only, but don't worry. She, she was an actress. My, my, my mom was a dancer and actress, and my dad was a jazz musician. So I came oh, from good. an artistic background and, and they would happily sit down and explain that it's not real. 
And I think with, like with you, Lloyd, you know, there was that element of, well, well this is like a magic trick. You know, they're making right. things look like they're happening, but it's not, it's just make-believe. So I was fascinated with that in terms of film. But I don't know, and everything, I'm not sure where my horror fascination came from. I do remember freaking our local priest or vicar out from when I was about nine years old, and I wrote a short story called Tarantula. <laughs> and he had to come to school and read it out, and I'd illustrated it with all of these drawings with lots of red felt tip you know, denoting all the blood of these tarantulas eat people. And I remember him reading that out and, and only getting about a third of the way story and, and think, thinking, no, I think I need to pick another child story to read out. <laughs> so there's something about that being able to be in a position to provoke a reaction from someone. Do you know what I mean? You know, showing it okay. to a fellow schoolmate or taking, you know, writing a story that is one step too far potentially, but mm -hmm. I don't know. And yeah. it wasn't until late I got into my horror films in a really big way, you know, until I was about 18, 19. And I had some money to actually invest in choosing and buying what I wanted to see rather than just having TV to, to go to. Right. Do you right. still write, Mike? Do you, do you still write? Would you want to write something nowadays? Uh, I, I've written a couple of screenplays. Uh, I'm not that good. I mean, I am. I'm not a great writer. So no, it was a hobby. It's nice. It's nice to write as a hobby, but yeah, that's about it. I don't know. Have, how many people have read your stuff? Just you? Um, yeah, probably just me. <laughs> see? Well, see, you don't know. It, it, that's just you telling yourself that's not yeah. very good. It could yeah. be great. Me, me and Lloyd can take it and we can act it out on screen. We'll just do all the parts ourselves. Well, let's do that awesome. then. I'll, I'll write, I'll write a, a Zoom-based horror film. Yeah. <laughs> well, we could do it. <laughs> I'm good. I'm, I'll do it. I'm down. If I'm you down. guys haven't seen, have you seen Host yet, by the way? I don't know whether you guys have got it out on Shudder, but it's incredible. That's my next watch because I just keep hearing so much about how fantastic it is. Yeah. You yeah, same Turtles? here. I haven't seen it yet. I actually have it tagged. I wanted to watch today or tomorrow because um, I've heard it's it's really good, like a uh, found footage film. I've heard it's like fantastic, so I want it to it It's in danger of being overhyped, so I don't overhype, but it's... Oh. It's less than an hour, which is a you know really good, and it's just so good. Yeah, you know, it's the characters are so well drawn, so well performed, and there's so much invention in there. When you think, oh, okay, I know where this is going, and it just pulls the rug from under you so many times. It's well worth a watch. What's the other nice. online film that was made a few years ago um, where they were talking, they were chatting with each other, and crazy things kept happening? It was all on screen. It was all on was like it a computer unfriended? screen. Was it unfriended? Was it unfriended? Yeah, or chat room. Yeah, unfriended. Unfriended? I actually liked unfriended. I thought that was really well done. Yeah, yeah. I like anything like that that's a little different. You know, somebody who's trying something different that maybe hasn't been done, you know, just throw it out there. I tell people, just throw it out there. See, see what works. I like yeah. new inventive ways to shoot things, you know? So what else about video nasties? Is there anything that we've that we've missed? I mean, of course we've missed a lot. You can't do everything, but uh, anything major that we should talk about? Do you recommend any further research? Uh, and if so, what sources do you cite? Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's a guy called Martin Barker who has done a lot of writing about that. Uh, so uh, there was um, actually, I'll just get one thing. Hold on one second. Yeah, I'm looking at Mark Martin Barker, British scholar of media studies and cultural studies. I'm I'm looking nice. him up. So, yeah, he's written a few things. I was watching um, this a little bit earlier on. This is the second version of the documentary by the guys from Nucleus Films. I've uh, heard of that. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, so Mark Morris and Jake West put together a couple of documentaries about it. So Video Nasty is the definitive guide on DVD. Try and hunt those out. They're out of print now, but they're well worth it. Um, okay. I've got it all around me actually now. There's some beautiful books like this, for instance, uh, The Art oh, wow. of the Nasty, which goes into to looking at all of the you know phenomenal artwork that these films sort of came up with. Uh, and it's got all of the alternative versions. Um, I mean, just get yourself a checklist and work your way through watching every one of them. There's, there's nothing more fun than 
hey, these are the films that the UK government deemed really offensive. Let's watch every single yeah. one to make sure. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> and if you guys want that, that Video Nasty Definitive Guide DVD, um, it's on US Amazon, but it looks like there's one in stock and it's $20. So somebody go out there and get it because there's one of yeah, them available. Get, so get run that it. one because they're, they're both limited edition uh, to 6,666 copies only. So. Yeah, that one's a cheap version. Uh, not a cheap one, uh, but it sounds like that's a good price. Uh, um, Last House on Dead End Street, was that on the list also? Yes, it was, but I can't remember whether it was on the main list or subsidiary list. Okay. Because that yeah, one... I mean, there's uh, there's no, a lot, like you said. No, no, I was there just saying, yeah, there's a lot. I mean, there's so many on there. It's it's definitely a big list. Like, like you said, you know, if you go through all of them, there's over 100 films. You know, it's... You do your checklist. Work your way. Yep. Uh, there's a lot of discussion um, in the chat, uh, so thank you guys for joining in. I hope, yeah. hope you've all enjoyed this. Um, I've certainly l enjoyed it, and I've learned a lot today. I'm going to do more research on video nasties because I think it's a, a pretty important topic. I think that uh, it's something that we should all um, be aware of, especially as horror yeah. fans. Yeah, you know, your horror history, stuff to know. Do you guys actually know the comedy show The Young Ones? Do I've you know heard of that, but the it's, young ones? is it British? It's a British comedy series, and it stars uh, Rick Mail, who you guys may know from Drop Dead Fred. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And Adrian Edmondson, who uh, probably not quite as well known. But have a look for The Young Ones episode called Nasty. It, it's on YouTube. Uh, so okay. that episode came out in 1984 and effectively drove everybody to go, wow, what is this? So um, it, it's an anarchic comedy TV show. Uh, really a lot of fun, but check it out. They, they give a, a lot of kudos to horror films. And it's got a live performance by The Damned singing the song Nasty. So oh, if you cool. like The Damned as well, check that one out. That one's There's worth a lot of comments from people saying that they have seen The Young Ones. The Young Ones is awesome. Yes, I've seen the young ones. So yeah. <laughs> Travis says, love the episodes Sick and Bambi. Sick and Bambi, yeah. I mean, nice. there's, there's an, it's it's like the UK, The Office. There's only been 12 episodes ever. So you might be able to find them all on YouTube. Uh, oh, okay. And you understand why everybody who was a kid in the mid-80s has this sort of punk anarchic attitude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that's a topic that I know quite a bit about is uh, British punk, punk. music. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I was a huge fan of all kinds of punk, British and American. So uh, that was my thing back in the day. Nice. Maybe that could be our next show, British punk music. There we go. Yeah. I'm down. I talk about whatever. So <laughs> I'll get a mohawk just for that episode. I'll do it. I mean, I could get one. I don't have any hair. I should just put one on. <laughs> I'd look cool. <laughs> Well, Mike, it's been an oh. absolute pleasure speaking with you yeah. today. Thanks for Love taking time out of your day to join us. Always, um, always. Yeah, we can't wait. Really for... nice. Go ahead. It's been really nice to just sit back and chat with you guys rather than just sort of talking about Arrow. It's just nice to just chill out and, and hang out and chat movies for sure. Exactly. Let's yeah, do it that, again. That's great. But um, we, we are looking forward to the next big Arrow update, so... Uh, whenever you're ready, just give us a shout. We, we we love spreading the word about Arrow, and we love giving people juicy little tidbits. Nice. <laughs> we, we do. Had a, we, had a, we had a light October announcement. We do know that November and December are looking really good. Uh, I can't give anything away, but, yeah. We've got awesome. some great stuff being lined up. There's some fun stuff coming. I'm looking forward to the, the 4K Pitch Black, so I'm ready mm -hmm. for that. Yes. Very much. Yes. I just had my uh, copy of Gamera delivered. It's so heavy. It's three kilograms. It's insane. Yeah. But I'm going to start my, working my way around that. Good old James Flower. A great uh, that's a good, uh, he that's was a so good marathon right and, there. He's got to be super pleased. I bet once this comes out, he'll sleep for like a month. Yeah. yeah. Well, we've, we've got him working on an even bigger one. <laughs> oh, no. We can't wait. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. All right. Anything else, Mike? You do you want to share with anybody? No, just, um, you know, great to catch up with you guys. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I hope, you know, you're all keeping safe. You're all keeping sane. And, you know, we'll all get together again soon. 
Um, I hope. As well as I do. So have a great day. Um, we'll let you get back to whatever you're doing this Sunday. And um, we hope to talk to you soon. Nice one. Cheers, Charles. Thanks, Lloyd. Thanks, All Mike. right, sir. Bye-bye. Speak, speak, speak soon. As you as well. Bye-bye. All right. Let me see if I can flip back over to just us. Hey. hey, hey. There we are. We're good to go. Good, so good, good. Yeah, I mean... Love talking to Mike. You know, Mike's got a lot of knowledge around this, and it's good to hear him his recommendations. And I know Arrow brought out a lot of these, and like you, you know, I knew quite a few of these, but not not a whole lot of stuff. You know, I just knew there was a lot of films that were prosecuted and banned, had to be edited, and it's fun to hear about them. It is, and I've I've read over the years. I've read about video nasties and you know everything that's going on, but. Um, I, I just don't know. It's not a lot of in depth that I know about it, you know, so that really helps out. Yeah, it does. I mean, kind of like you, um, I've, uh, I've heard stuff and, you know, it's kind of one of those things where, you know, there's not a lot of info, you know, I always wondered about like, you know, when they prosecuted stuff, I'm like, well, what was the outcome? It's like, oh, they were banned. I'm like, it's just so interesting to think, you know, and they had to edit 19 seconds out to get a movie released and i'm like well, why 19 seconds i'm like yeah. <laughs> like what's going on here so well we had we had struggles like that i mean um in in the u.s as well it just it just wasn't punishable by going to jail or a fine or anything yeah. you know it was just like well you can release it but it's not going to get a good rating and it's not going to go out to you know everybody and you're not going to make any money basically is the bottom line which sucks yeah. too, but like Friday the 13th, you know, they shaved quite, you know, they would just go through and they would shave a little bit off of all of the gory parts and release it. And, you know, you don't even really notice it. I mean, it's so minor, but that's what they had to do to get an R rating. It's crazy, right? Mm -hmm. It's crazy. And the fact, like you're saying, that people could, could get fined and possibly go to jail for even like renting or selling these movies, you know, and I'm sure... Has a distributor, then you had to keep up to date because you never know. You may have something on your shelf that next month is now banned, and you're like, "Well, I didn't even know what's right. going on." It's like it's crazy, but we'll yeah. have to do that again. You know, I love talking to Mike. You'll um, we'll have mm -hmm. to do this again here soon. You know, absolutely. There's we have quite a few people watching us because I, I went ahead and streamed this one on all of our platforms today, and cool. um, I want to thank everybody that's out there watching. I'm going through the list right now. Um, uh, didn't really get to very many comments, but I do want to thank everybody for, for commenting and interacting and chatting. Please do us a favor and spread the word about Frightmare HQ. Uh, if you will like and share our videos, we would really appreciate that. If you'll go on YouTube, if you're on YouTube, like them and make a comment. That really helps us, you know, just making a comment on our YouTube videos is fantastic. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the Charles, you can tell us more about that and how that helps us. Yeah, I mean, you know, you guys sharing and liking is great, but, you know, really YouTube is, you know, where we get a lot of new subscribers and viewers. And YouTube, of course, has millions of videos. So the more you guys comment and, you know, not, not on the stream itself, but comment actually in the comment section. Yeah. And the, the more stream, you like it. When the stream yeah, stops. Yeah, the stream right? ends. Yeah, when the stream stops, um, and the more likes you give it, the more it actually pushes it up when people search for something. So if somebody searches for video nasties, the more comments and likes, uh, views a video has, the higher up on placement it'll be. So Definitely. that's what gets people moving in with us. And we, Lloyd and I love sharing horror knowledge. So the more people you think are interested in knowing about horror, then that's why we're here. You know, we love it. The more, the better. We we yeah. want uh, we love spending time with all of you guys. We've got a lot of regulars, and man, we love that support. Thank you for your support. Yeah. But uh, one thing you can do to help us is share, comment, like as much as possible, and spread the word. Get a, get the word out there that uh, we're doing these streams. Uh, we've been doing them for a while now, and we're having a blast. You know, we're yeah, we're on almost foot four months now. We've been doing this about four months mm -hmm. now, and. It's been a fantastic experience. I'm having a great time doing it, and I love interacting with everybody. So thank you very much. Yeah, same here. I love interacting. I love talking to everybody. Um, that's why, you know, that's why Lloyd and I do live streams, you know, mainly because we're not a big fan of just recording stuff 
ourselves and posting it. I've done some, which are fun, but I like just seeing people's comments and having people here with us. You know, it's yeah. like a, it's a nice little thing. Um, and also, I'm going to play this the scare video for those that may have never seen it. This is uh, us. We're going to scare the hell out of you, me and Charles. We're kind of, for those that don't know, we, we kind of imitate Stephen King and Maximum Overdrive. We're, We're gonna, gonna scare, scare the, the hell, hell out of you. you. <laughs> I need the wonky eyes. Yeah, exactly. Almost We're scared the hell, the hell out of you, out Lord. Of you. <laughs> um, also, uh, whenever something fun happens, um, yeah, get it. Uh, we played that video. Yeah, which I've sped up a little bit. Okay. And so our voices sound like chipmunk voices. We're scared the hell out of you. I'm gonna get hell out of you, Lord. Get your buggins. Buggins is buggins, you like. Get the buggins. Boogie Wuggins. Boogie Wuggins. Buggins. Um, uh, also, yeah, for so... our Twitch viewers, um, you can subscribe if you have a Prime account. You can subscribe to us on Twitch, and you get one free subscription per month with a with a Prime account, with a Amazon Prime video account. So hit the subscribe button, and it'll get, pop up and show you the options to do that. Yeah. Uh, and I just posted about that too, I believe, on Twitch. Sweet. So hopefully, now nah, it doesn't look like it's going through. That happens sometimes. But uh, uh, we also have our Patreon too. If you guys are interested in more, we have Patreon levels where, um, you know, starting at seven dollars a month, you can actually get exclusive episodes from us. We say we do one a month, but we do them whenever we feel like it. It's usually more than one a month. But yeah, we did two last month, and we've kind of been doing uh, director series lately. We we yeah. covered. Um, John Carpenter first, which was a really fun episode, and we do those live. And uh, the second one was George Romero, and you can join yep. now, and you can go and watch those. Those are exclusive to Patreon subscribers. Yeah, um, yeah, we like to do that director series. You know, we, like I said, we're all about spread knowledge, and you know, there's a lot of good directors out there, and sometimes we go into stuff that's not even just just horror, because some of these directors have some other stuff maybe people haven't heard of, so. Like John Carpenter's Elvis, which is a great movie. <laughs> you go watch that. Yeah. Uh, so if you're looking for links, if you want to find more ways to support Frightmare HQ, just go to FrightmareHQ.com. Links to all the channels that we go live on are there. Our Patreon link is also there. Uh, and there's some other information like our, our normal schedule, and mm -hmm. which we are deviating from. This coming week, instead of Wednesday, we're doing Tuesday this week. Tuesday. And Tuesday. that that episode is going to be what, Charles? Uh, we're in, we're continuing our year in horror, so we're making it to 1973 right now. Which I can tell you that we've kind of already sort of programmed a lot of it, and 73 was another good year, just like 72, so a lot of good stuff. Definitely. And those year in horrors, they're... Uh, you know, we, we, we're deviating this year, but they're always at 7 Central Time, 7 p.m. Next week, we'll be back on our normal time. But they kind of go as long as we feel like they need to go. Because if, if there's 40 movies we need to talk about, we'll talk about 40 movies. If there's 10 movies, we'll talk about 10 movies. It's just kind of how it is. So Yeah. Yep. When we first started doing them, we thought, well, well, we'll be able to do this in about an hour. And I think we ended up at like two and a half hours for the first one. We were like, we, uh -oh, we, we have thought, to cut this we, short. <laughs> We thought we could talk about every horror movie that was released every year. And we're like, we could do it like at an hour. It was only 50 something movies. And then we were like, like two episodes later, we were like, oh God, stop. Yeah. <laughs> we're like, we can't. We got to shut it down. All right, Charles. I think yeah. that we're probably done for the day. Um, we're good. We're good till else? Tuesday. Yeah. Anything else you've got? Ah, I'm good. I'm right. ready to, you know, just glad to see everybody. Thanks, everybody, for joining us on this, you know, special Sunday edition. And yep. keep in touch. Colby Shanahan just joined us and said, what's up, guys? Go back and what was about the end, Colby. But uh, you can go back and watch the replay as soon as this one's over. But uh, yeah. I think that wraps it up for today. Thank you to Mike Hewitt for joining us. Uh, thank you, Charles. Um, once again for being the co-host here and, and all yeah. your knowledge and thank you to everybody that Same joined us and watched us today um, we will see you Tuesday 7 p.m. Central for our next episode of Frightmare Q HQ yep. thank you and have a great Sunday 
Peace. Sunday. Bye, everybody.